welcome to Exo News TV. I'm Michael Sala. In March 2014, Captain K, whose real name is Randy Kramer, came forward to reveal that he had spent 17 years on Mars as part of a highly classified program called the Mars Defense Force. He then claims to have spent almost three years with a secret space fleet called the Earth Defense Force, where he flew anti-gravity vehicles throughout the solar system and was promoted to captain. In his most recent interview with Exo News TV, Kramer reveals that about a year ago he was contacted by his military superiors to disclose the truth about his covert service on Mars and time with the secret space fleet. Kramer revealed that a year ago he was contacted by two US Marine Corps Special Section officers whom he trained under during his initial training as a youth in a covert program called Operation Moonshadow. The first to contact him was a Colonel Jamison who then put him in touch with him. My name is Robert Duncan O'Fennan, and I'm a survivor of what was known as Project Talent, which was a sub-project of the infamous MKUltra. The personality that's sitting here talking right now was put to sleep, and the uh, artificial personality is awakened, and does the job that it's commanded to do. I started putting in enough letters together to know that something wasn't right. And then just about 19 years ago now, I was involved in an automobile accident to where my neck uh, was pretty much finished off and I had to have an MRI done. When I was in the tube and the machine fired up, from what we can understand, there was electromagnetic clashes between the machine and the cranial implant that I have. In that instant, if you can imagine a thousand TV screens at once, and each screen is a picture, and each picture is a memory, and you know in that instant that all your nightmares, all your daymares were real. The uh, Mars memory came flooding back full bore a couple of years ago. There's bases on Mars. There's underground bases. The surface of Mars isn't exactly what NASA wants people to think that it is. It is a weak atmosphere. It does have weak pressure, but it is definitely survivable. Mars isn't barren. The sky is, is bluer than they tell you to. It's not as blue as Terra, but it, it's bluer. It's not the purple like they try to tell us that it is when I have been shifted from early teenage years from talent over to what most people think of as the Universal Soldier Project or the Super Soldier Project. One of my jobs there was to pilot a supply craft to Mars. Duncan and I met up on a training field. We don't know if that was orchestrated or not, but they found that we clicked together really well. And so they would send us out as a team and we'd complement each other. He would do a lot of the physical stuff and I would be there to scout for him and to send, boost him with energy if he needed it. We went through specialized training together and we did a lot of jobs all over the world together. And in all actuality, she was supposed to have been on this milk run with us, but I vetoed that order. I do recall though, even then, even in the personality of 197, I didn't want to take this run. We actually had the memories at separate times, and for a couple of years, we didn't know that they fit together until we broke it down and put the pieces together and realized that the injuries that he had were consistent with my memories, and we sort of had this aha moment. 
the craft itself was what we call a round nose. Uh, you can imagine a um, Converse tennis shoe, the toe of the tennis shoe. That was the front end of the fuselage. Uh, it was built something like the shuttles that we have now, but much bigger, tremendous engines. And we were vertical lift and takeoff. We did not have to ride piggyback on some solid propellant, you know, 200 year old technology to be taken into orbit. Uh, we were just loaded up, we cruised out the hangar bay, and we lifted straight up. I was called in one day. They didn't tell me what I was gonna be doing. It was kind of a last minute thing. There were three of us. I sat in the center chair, which was the command chair, and I had a pilot and a navigator. And I remember vividly, we had very ill feelings about this trip. They didn't want to tell me anything about what had happened to him. I knew it was something really bad. I was pulled in quickly. I remember because they had pretty much called it on him. So they had brought me in as a last ditch effort. I think someone maybe said, well, go ahead and try this, but you know, it's not gonna work. It took less than an hour from takeoff to uh, we hit Atmo. And when I say Atmo, I mean atmosphere. And as we were going down through the atmosphere to land, we lost all power in the craft and we lost all control. We began to spiral and we hit planet and the ship broke apart. When I came through, I was face down in the dirt and I glanced up and the first thought through my mind was, okay, I survived, I'm alive. And I saw a shadow coming over me look up enough to see it was part of the fuselage that had broken off in Atmo and it hit me and it came down across my back and that's the last thing I remember. Duncan was, they had Duncan's body on a gurney I don't know if he had any vital signs or not. I don't think he did, but I don't know for sure. I just remember that his skin was gray and he had lacerations all over his upper body. And he was actually laid out on an autopsy table. <laughs> he was lying in a very abnormal position, the way you know his arms were positioned and his, his neck it wasn't how it should be. And I just remember, as a remote viewer, being able to leave my body, I knew that I had a chance to save him because his astral body, his soul, his energy, was nearby still. So I climbed on the gurney, I got my body situated, and I just remember taking off like a shot out of my body and into the ether somewhere. I followed the, the cord of his energy. There, there still was one. It was very faint and miraculously I was able to find him at the other end of it still. He was, his astral body was in a very confused state. It was sort of in this in-between place it was disoriented. He didn't recognize me at first. So I had to give him a really rousing pep talk. He came back. 